Okay, so welcome to our uh, first video in the playlist on uh, functional analysis. And in this first video, we're going to discuss the concept of a uh, metric space. So we're going to introduce the concept of a metric space. Okay, uh, so firstly, let's have a bit of motivation for this definition. So, uh, we want to look at the real line. So if we look at the real line, uh, we have a set uh, of real numbers, so a set of symbols, basically. And what structure is it that allows us to do analysis? What structure is it that allows us to do to um, allows us to um, have the concept of limits, basically, uh, in this structure? Because all the real line is uh, coming down to it is that we have uh, we have a set of symbols. How? Why can you do analysis on this set of symbols? Why? What? How do you define the concept? How do you define the concept of a limit? And uh, if we look at that abstractly, can we generalize it? Can we get? Can we create other sets of symbols and put a similar structure on uh, these sets of symbols, uh, such that we can do analysis on this uh, abstract set? And that's really what the concept of a metric space is. Now, those of you who know topology will know that, uh, in fact, the concept that allows us to understand, uh, allows us to define the concept of a limit is actually a topology. But metric spaces are one step up from that. So met the theory of metric spaces came before topology. Uh, people realized that topology was the most foundational, um, foundational structure that you needed in order to um, in, uh, have the concept of a limit. But... Um, one way we can do it is through metric spaces. Okay, so um, if you have a, a limit, if you have a limit in the real numbers, so let's say we have a sequence, let's say uh, the sequence x, xn uh, as n is e from n is equal to 1 to infinity is a sequence of real numbers uh, which has a limit. So uh, let's say the limit of xn as n approaches infinity is equal to uh, some x. What does that mean? It means, uh, this means uh, this means that uh, for all little epsilon greater than zero, there exists uh, there exists uh, a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies uh, that uh, the distance between well uh, the modulus of x n minus x is less than Epsilon. Okay, so let's have a look intuitively at what this means. So we have some sequence. Uh, this is x1, uh, this is x2, going on, x3, x4, and let's say they start converging on some point here, which is x. Uh, so they're getting closer and closer and closer and closer to x. Uh, so basically, this definition says that you give me any epsilon you like greater than zero, I will draw you a, a ball around x of size epsilon. So let's say this interval here, which is uh, x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon. Uh, I can create any interval of any size I want around uh, x. And for all intervals uh, around x, uh, there exists a natural number. So there exists a big N, which is an element of natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to that big N, it implies that the distance between xn and, and x is less than epsilon. So basically, this says that there is a point in the sequence. So there is some uh, x big N such that this term and all terms after it are within this interval of size epsilon. And you can do that. You can construct an N. Uh, so this N, this big N here, will be a function of epsilon, function of epsilon. So if I give you an epsilon, uh, you can, whatever epsilon that is, as long as it's greater than zero, you can find me a big N, uh, which will depend on that epsilon. So there's not just one big N that works for all epsilons. No, no, no. Uh, so, but for each epsilon, I can find you a big N such that after that point, such that the point X big N and all terms in the sequence after that are within the interval. And that's uh, the meaning of convergence. And if you think about that definition for long enough, you will, uh, you will see that that uh, agrees intuitively, intuitively by what you, with what you mean by saying that uh, a sequence Xn converges to X. Okay, uh, so this function here was utterly essential. This, uh, this measure of a distance we could replace this by some abstract function, distance of xn to x is less than epsilon. So if we had a notion of distance on a set, would that 
give you enough to define to define uh, the concept of a limit. So that that's the con that's what a metric space is going to be. So this is what a metric space is now. So definition. So definition of a metric space. Uh, so a metric space is most definitely a set. A metric space is a set. Is a set X. So basically, you create a set, create a set with your own symbols in. So basically, I could make up some symbols here. I could make up some Greek symbols, maybe. Uh, well, I haven't made that symbol up, but let's say, let me make up a symbol of my own. There we go, another symbol of, um, let's have some squiggle like that, an L. Um, F, B. Okay, so I've got some symbols there. So abstract symbols. And I now want to turn this into a metric space. I want to turn it into a structure on which I can do analysis. And the way you do that is you need to define a distance function on this set uh, with a distance function. Function. Okay, uh, so the distance function is going to be a function of two of these. So you put in two symbols that say little x and little y, where little x and little y uh, are elements of um, are elements of well elements of this big set x, and uh, d is going to map the pair x y. It's going to map it onto uh, the positive real numbers, so zero to plus infinity. So that agrees with our concept of distances uh, that they should be positive. I.e., you can't have negative distances unless, of course, you're you're some physicist doing relativity. Um, okay, uh, so. Uh, in the definition of a metric space, uh, distances are always positive. So you map this pair of values x, y onto zero, zero to plus infinity. And that doesn't obviously include plus infinity. We're not dealing with the uh, non-negative extended real numbers. We're just dealing with the non-negative real numbers. OK, uh, so if formally what you'd say is that, dis that this distance function is going to map the Cartesian product of x by x. Now, what does the Cartesian product mean? It basically just says, uh, do this, basically. So uh, put all of the elements of your set along here. So this is the elements of my set, uh, f, b, and here's another element of my set, and create ordered pairs out of them, basically. Create a new set, which is ordered pairs of these. Uh, so here we have an ordered pair, phi and phi. Here's another ordered pair. Let's put this one first, phi, uh, this funny symbol that I just created. Uh, then we'd have phi, uh, the Laplace symbol, uh, phi, or Lagrange symbol, whatever you want to call that, f, uh, and then phi, b. I'm sorry, I've run out of space a bit. Uh, and then we go on like this. So we'd have uh, this one. Uh, so basically, you create new elements. You create a new set, which is all elements of this in the first position and all elements of the set again in the second position. And basically, the distance function is going to map each one of these onto a value. Uh, so I'm just going to complete the set because it, it, it is useful conceptually to see what the Cartesian product is and what the uh, domain of our, of our function is. So we have this funny symbol L again, and then this uh, funny symbol F and then this uh, funny symbol B. In fact, I'm not going to complete the set because it will take too long. Right, so you could complete the set and you get 25 new elements and D is going to ascribe to each one of these ordered pairs, it's going to ascribe a non-negative real number. So for instance, I could uh, ascribe, so for instance, to this one, I would ascribe zero because uh, the distance between two sets, two, what, the distance between the same uh, something in itself is going to be zero, and that's going to be the axiom. So um, let me just state now the axioms. This basically, I don't want to just def uh, I don't want you to just ascribe um, real non-negative real numbers to this arbitrarily. I wanted to obey some axioms that make this structure interesting. You could obviously just describe whatever non-negative real numbers you want to it, uh, but uh, it won't be very interesting. The way you make uh, your metric space in the definition of the metric space interesting is that the metric space distance function has to obey some axioms. Metric space. Uh, distance function must obey some axioms. Must obey some axioms. Okay, so uh, first axiom is that uh, what is the first axiom? Firstly, that the distance of two little points x, y. Uh, is going to be some element of uh, the non-negative real numbers. So that really was part of the definition rather than an axiom. Uh, but we'll put that, state that as axiom one. Uh, 
Axiom 2 is that uh, distance between x and x, so the distance between a uh, element of the set and itself should be equal to zero. That's intuitive. Uh, basically, that's the same as saying the distance between two and two is zero. So that's uh, obviously true in the real numbers, and we're going to want that to be true in our uh, set. We don't want the distance between a point and itself to be five. Okay, and this turns out to be the only way. Uh, so the only way uh, that the distance can be zero, distance can be function, distance can be zero. So we want that to be the only way uh, that the distance can be zero. So if you have distance between x and y, uh, that should be equal, not equal to zero if um, x is not equal to y. So if you have two distinct points in your set, you don't want the distance to be zero. Uh, okay, so that's fine. That's another uh, point. Uh, so three. Uh, so the only way that the distance can be equal to zero is if the two points are equal to one another. And if the two points are equal to one another, they are zero. Okay, so... Uh, so the set of, uh, so basically uh, it's an if and only if. If you're equal to zero, you are the same point. If you're the same point, your distance is equal to zero. Okay, so the third axiom uh, is that it's symmetric. So the distance between x and y should equal the distance between y and x. And you might think, gosh, how trivial. Uh, but it's not when you think about it as a function, uh, a function from this uh, this Cartesian product of x and x. So basically what I'm saying is that the, dis is that the uh, distance that I ascribe to this ordered pair here should be the same as the distance I ascribe to this ordered pair here because um, this is because even though they're in a different order, uh, the distance between those should be the same. So basically, I'm saying that it should be perfectly symmetric along this diagonal line uh, down here. So all of the elements down here, where you've got uh, phi, phi, uh, whatever that symbol is with itself, all of the pairs where you've got the same thing, they should all be equal to zero and. Uh, if you uh, go from this one to this one, from this one to what's ever here, to, from this one to here, then the distances should be the same. I.e., it should be perfectly. This uh, function should be symmetric in this um, in this uh, well, this Cartesian product table that we have here. Okay, uh, so that is not a trivial property there that uh, this function is symmetric like that. Okay, and uh, so that's called symmetry or the symmetric property. And then the final one is the one that gives metrics there, uh, makes them interesting, basically, uh, which is that the distance uh, between x and y should be less than or equal to the distance between x and z uh, plus the distance between z and y. So basically, uh, that is this is called the triangle inequality, and let's have a look at what it means in terms of the um, in terms of this table back here. Okay, so if we took, uh, say, uh, the distance between uh, phi and f, that is some real number here. And now I'll find some other number that you want. So uh, let's, say, let's say it's um, this one here, shall we have? Uh, will that work? Yes, I think it will, yes. Uh, so uh, if I take this symbol here, I want, and I look at the distance between phi and this symbol here, and I add that to the distance between uh, this symbol here and f. Uh, so basically, uh, the distance between phi and this thing is here. Uh, so let me just highlight it uh, to make it obvious. Uh, so uh, this one here, um, here, is here. And uh, where's my other highlighter gone? Here's the blue pen. Uh, this distance here is, um, where's this one? This is distance here. And if I add those two together, I want that to be uh, greater than uh, this distance here. So the, so if I work out this distance function, remember this is just the Cartesian product space here. So we're, we've got some function d which is attaching to each one of these ordered pairs uh, a non-negative real number. Uh, so I want the value ascribed to this one to be less than or equal to the value ascribed to this one plus the value ascribed to this one. And this has to be true, uh, not just for those individual points, because I just picked those arbitrarily. This has to be true for all x, y, and z is an element of um, is an element of what do we call our original space x. Okay, uh, so the reason this is called the triangle inequality is that if we imagine our space to be the space R two, so if we imagine our space to be R two, uh, 
and we uh, imagine the distance function between ordered pairs to be the normal distance function, i.e. if I take any two points in R2, there is a distance between them, the usual sense of the distance uh, between them, i.e. draw a line and measure it with a ruler. That uh, is the value you ascribe with this distance function, and you can check that that will form a metric space, and we will check in a future video that that forms a metric space. Uh, but basically, if we labeled this point x and y, and then we took some third point z, and I worked out the distance between x and z, which is this bit here, and then the distance between z and y, which is this bit here. So let me just highlight it. So this one here is this. Um, x and z here is this. And, um, uh, oh, not, not that again. And z and y, the distance between z and y, is uh, the distance of that length of that line there. Okay, uh, so the triangle inequality basically says that uh, the length of these two sides added together must be greater than or equal to the side there. And basically what we're doing is we're now t extending that property to our arbitrary uh, metric space or abstract metric space uh, because it's going to have a number of very useful, qual uh, useful qualities. And it's going to mean that a lot of theorems that hold true for spaces like R2 are going to hold true in our abstract metric spaces. Uh, so those are all the axioms of a metric space. Uh, and now, basically, I want to, what I want to show you is that with those axioms, we can just we can define the notion of a limit uh, within our uh, within our abstract set. So basically, if we have a sequence uh, x n, uh, so a sequence like this, n is equal to 1 to infinity, where all the xn's are in our abstract set, I can now define uh, the limit, if the limit as n approaches infinity of xn is equal to x, that means, I can say now that that means that for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists an n, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the distance between xn and x is less than epsilon. So basically, this new definition is saying that whatever epsilon you give me, uh, I can find you a point in this sequence, a big N in this sequence, uh, such that for that point and for all points afterwards in this sequence xn, uh, the distance, the distance function between uh, the little x, uh, well, the elements of the sequence xn and the limit is less than epsilon, and I can do that for all epsilon. I can find a point after which uh, it's within any epsilon of it. So I can define this notion of a limit, and that's perfectly well defined now. Uh, in our set. So, for instance, if I uh, go back to our abstract set that I've defined some metric on now, um, if I take the sequence L, 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 i.e. all xn's are equal to L, so uh, let me go back over to this page. So, if uh, all xn's are equal to L, i.e. for all n, so it's just a constant sequence of L, 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 uh, then uh, the limit is clearly L, and the reason for that is that, um, is that the distance between L and L is equal to zero by the axioms of metric spaces. So whatever epsilon you give me, uh, I can just let big N equal one. So the first term is equal to L, and after all that, all the terms are still equal to L. So all the terms in the sequence have distance away from the limit, zero. Uh, so therefore, it does satisfy this property that if I let big N equal one, then all terms after it are... Um, have distance away from the limit uh, less than epsilon for whatever epsilon you give me because zero is less than any epsilon that is greater than zero. Uh, so basically, uh, we can define the concepts of limit on this abstract uh, metric space that we have created.